Turning your attention today to the book of, Ma of Romans, chapter 8, verse 1. Romans, chapter 8, verse 1 through 4 states, So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Anybody belong to Christ today? Amen. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirements of the law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature but instead follow the spirit and i want to talk to you today upon the thought no condemnation no condemnation that word can be defined as a courtroom uh, in courtroom language, to have no condemnation declared means to be found innocent of the accusation. To have no sentence afflicted and no guilty verdict found. And by the grace of God, you and I believers in Jesus Christ will not face the condemnation of God. 1 John 3 and 14 says that we have passed from death to life. You and I today were sentenced to die. But we have passed through it because we believe in the work of the cross. Because of what Jesus Christ did for us. And I'm thankful for that. The Bible teaches that every human being will be brought before the judgment throne of God. For an ultimate and a decisive judgment. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, says that we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may be recompensed for his deeds in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. But Christ himself is going to be that judge. John chapter 5, verse 27 says, And he gave him authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of Man. We are all naturally under this condemnation of God, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already. Condemnation is not for the believer, but condemnation is for those who do not believe. Because the later part of John 3.18 says that whoever does not believe stands condemned already. But Christians will not be found guilty on that judgment day. John 3 and 18, the beginning part of it says this, that he who believes in him is not judged. But he who does not believe has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. People often, they try to protect themselves from fear. They try to put them, put, by putting their faith into something that they do or something that they have. Our world today and even in Christianity do this. People often will put uh, they put their faith in a lot of different things. They can put their faith in relationships. They can put their faith in skill. They can put their faith in what they have and material things. And, and, and they, they feel good because of what the things that they, that they have. They can put their, their hope and their faith in good deeds. 
feel like as long as I'm doing good, that, that then I'll be accepted by him. They, they put it by their intelligence. I was uh, seeing a thing yesterday morning of, of one of the, um, the uh, Fox and Friends on Saturday morning had, had wrote, he had graduated from Harvard. And he recently had wrote a book, and uh, and anyhow, he had he had taken and scribbled out his name and told them they can go ahead and file his his certificate uh, back that he no longer wanted his degree from Harvard. And his point, his book is about trying to change the mindset of Americans that that your degree doesn't give you your 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 self worth. And so uh, yesterday on the live show, he not only had uh, scribbled out his and told them they can have their, their diploma back, but he also sent them his, his book that he wrote and uh, was mailing it out. Uh, and, and the thing is, people do. They put, and, and that was part of the conversation yesterday, that a lot of people, they put their self-worth and where their kids go to school and where they went to school and how many degrees that they have. But the degrees behind your name doesn't change who you are. People can have a lot of degrees and act like they're something, and they're still scumbags. They're still people you wouldn't want to hang out with. I was reading one of the uh, uh, from one of the personalities from from Dave Ramsey uh, from his from the Ramsey Solution, and she was talking about when she was dating. She was dating this wealthy man. And uh, he had flew her out out west, and and uh, she was staying at this twenty thousand square foot home with four uh, gigantic pool resort style pools and all this stuff. And she was talking about how wealthy this guy was that she was dating. But she said after being there with him, she said I realized that uh, it was it, 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 it he himself I was not attracted to. I couldn't wait to get out of that place so I could get back home into my own my own place because being even around him he did nothing for me a lot of people get caught up into the wealth and they live absolutely miserable lives because everything's just false amen and so her point was is that she would rather live a life with the man that she truly loved the man that she would really love to be with and be able to sacrifice through this life and be able to live a life uh, that they built together. But a lot of people, they do. They put their faith in, in, in their own intelligence. And they put their m faith in money. And they put their faith in their very own possessions. Um, but can I remind us today, that's all false. It's all false. It's all fake. And, and some people, they feel puffed up. And amazing how people feel really good when the market's up. And then when the market has been going crazy, thanks to Uncle Joe, that people then start living with depression and they're all down in the dumps. Uh, this week, my son and I, we had an op the opportunity. One of his his uh, bucket list dreams was to go to be able to see Ramsey Solution. And most of you know my story and that we absolutely love the 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 principles and and Dave Ramsey himself. And uh, not just trying to do a plug in for him, but he definitely has uh, his principles changed our lives, and I'm forever grateful for it especially coming from a Christian uh, a standpoint. And it's not about money, but it's all about Christ, and he makes sure you understand that. But we had the opportunity this week to go there and to, to, to even be a part of the show, and he opened up Thursday's show with talking about the economy and how some thing, majority of things are Biden's fault. But there are some things that are not Biden's fault. But, man, this, this whole thing, and it's just putting all of us, the, the pressure upon all of us today, and, and I get it. I understand. And, and I feel uh, for those who are really young, who are trying to get a start in life, and those that are definitely older, maybe they didn't have, uh, and they didn't have a lot put back. I get all of those things, and, and I feel for that. But can I tell you today that your worth and who you are today has nothing to do with how smart you are, and it has nothing to do with how much money you have, and it has nothing to do with the possessions that you have. Everything that you have today is about Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I, I, I love it, and I've been reflecting a lot. I've been talking about it. This John Deloney, uh, the book that I've read, that he was talking about that people can take everything, but there's one thing that they, they can't take uh, something from you. You have to give, you, allow them to come into your life 
uh, you, you choose who you allow to hurt you. And his point was is that people can take all my possessions and man can even take my life, but I choose whether I want them to hurt me physically or mentally or not. I make that choice. Amen. So I want you to know today that God can save us today from one danger that we really do fear, and that is eternal condemnation. There are people today that, that may be listening to this message right now that you deal with that. You deal with the condemnation, that burden, that weight. You feel condemned because of your past. But can I remind you today that your past has a period. Your past has a period. What you did yesterday and what you did many years ago, you cannot go back and undo it. Your past has a period. You can go back and apologize for what you did and make it right with that person. But that does not wash out that you did something yesterday. Amen. But your past has a period. But I want you to know today that in Christ you get to move forward. Amen. And in Christ today you can say that was the old me. But there's a period with that. I did that and I made that mistake yesterday. But there's a period with that. All I know is today that in that right now here today that I am a new man in Christ Jesus. Anybody thankful for that? We believe in God by recognizing the the insufficiencies of our own efforts to merit salvation and by asking Him to do, to, to do His work within us. Our salvation today is not based on all the things and rules and regulations and everything else that people do on the, put on themselves or keep. Everything is based upon Jesus Christ. When Jesus talks about unbelievers, He means those who reject or ignore Him completely. When he's talking about the unbelievers and those that are going to deal with condemnation, he's talking about those who reject or ignore him completely, not those who have even momentary doubts. Can I help free somebody today? Amen. You are normal at that. Any time you begin to doubt God, you just can't live in that doubt. All of us at times, and we don't know, we don't talk about stuff like that, do we? Oh, I never doubt. Oh, don't lie. At some point in time in your walk with God, you begin to question. God, where are you? You begin to doubt. And if you act like you're super spiritual, there's an altar for you to go repent over. Because you're lying. All of us today have dealt with something at some point in time. Amen. And so... We can deal with it, but I want you to know today, just because you deal with it, you may go through a season of that. Just don't don't you dare live in that season, because if you live in that season, you will absolutely absolutely be, be miserable. You have to grow out of that season. Amen. All of us go through seasons. Right now we're in a hot season, but you can't live in this hot season forever. Things won't grow. Things will die off. So you can't live here. We can't live in summer all the time. We know after summer, fall comes. You can't live in fall all the time, although some of us would like to. Anybody tasting that that pumpkin spice latte about right now? That's coming out in August. August already, yeah. yeah. And you can't live in winter all the time. These are seasons. And so is in my, in my walk with God. Their seasons. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 25, verse 33, uh, it says, and he will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. And the king will come and say to those that are on my right, come, you are blessed uh, of my father and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. However, the no condemnation involves more than the acquittal on judgment day romans 8 and 1 the apostle paul speaks in this present tense as evidence of the word now and also notice the word in the king james where he says therefore 
which points to the reader to a previous passage found in Romans chapter 7. So the previous chapter, verse 21 through 25, he says that I find, the Apostle Paul says, I find then the principle that evil is present in me. The one who wants to do good, for I joyfully concur with the law of God in the inner man. But I see a different law in the members of my body waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin which is in my members. Wretched man that I am who will set me free from this body of death. But thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then on one hand I myself with the mind and serving the law of God, but on the other with the with my flesh, the law of sin. The Apostle Paul describes his struggle. Anybody can admit to that today that all of us deal with that struggle against that sinful nature that you and I are living in a struggle that every believer experiences. And Paul writes that although I want to do good, Evil is right there with me. Anybody feel that sometimes? Anybody went through that this week? Even though I'm trying to do good, man, there's something that just kind of comes back. Evil is right there with me. Paul said, what a wretched man I am. It's very humbling to know that every time I'm thinking I'm doing great, Deal with this stinking, rotten, stupid flesh of mine. And it reminds me, I'm just a wretched man. Paul expresses his hatred for his sinful nature, which continues to war against his new nature in Christ. I'm afraid today that so many times that in our walk with God, we, we, we beat ourselves up because we try to do good and we know which way to follow, but then we deal with this humanity of us and we're just constantly wrestling back and forth and it's easy to beat yourself up and that you condemn yourself because of your faults and failures. But we have to understand today, it is a war against the new nature in Christ. Paul hates the sin that he commits. But he is also thankful because he has been set free from the slavery of sin. He now has the ability to do what is good because of Christ. I can't keep help but just keep coming back and beating this into us today. It's all about Christ, ladies and gentlemen. Because Christ delivered him, Christ can and will deliver you and I. And then Paul takes this a step further in Romans chapter 8 when he teaches the believers that we're not only free from the bondage of sin but they are free from their inner emotion and thoughts that tend to bring up feelings of condemnation to the Christian whenever he does commit sin Romans 8 and 2 says for the law of the spirit of the life is Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. So you and I today, as Christians, we are free from the law of sin and death. Which means that although you may commit a sin, the law no longer has power to condemn you. Even though you make a mistake, the law has no longer the power to condemn you. We are not under the law's condemnation because Jesus Christ fulfilled. He filled up and He completed the expectations of the law and He was the, the perfect Lamb that was slain for you and I. He was the perfect one. He, was, he filled up and completed all the expectations of the, of the law perfectly and believers are in Christ. You thankful for that benefit today? In Christ. I am in Him. 
all the benefits, everything is about being in Christ. Amen. Man, it gets me excited today to think about how that we are linked up. We are, we, we are a part of Him. We are in Him. Amen. And I'm blessed by Him. And it doesn't have to be this, this prosperity message that everybody preaches and, and that, you know, come to Christ and He's going to make you wealthy. Ladies and gentlemen, as long as I'm in Him, amen, the peace that I have is a blessing of God. Amen. You and I being in our right mind is a blessing of God. Amen. God giving us the help uh, to, to not wanting and they're longing to be addicted to things. It is blessings of God. Amen. And just having family and being uh, and, and even, even having a good work ethic. These are all blessings of God. Amen. And so I'm a rich man today. Not by my bank account, but because I realize that I am in Christ. Amen. I'm linked up to Him, and I'm thankful for that. Romans 8.3 says, For what the law couldn't, uh, could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did by sending His Son into the likeness of a sinful flesh, and as an offering for sin, He condemned sin in the flesh. Because believers are in Christ. They have the joy of being counted as righteous simply because Christ is righteous. I am righteous today because I'm in him. I'm not righteous because my sleeves are all the way down to my wrist. I am righteous because I am in him, period. Oh, but we'll come back around to it. All the other things that you and I put on ourselves to make ourselves feel righteous, bunch of so false because I'm righteous in him. Philippians chapter three, verse nine, and may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own driven from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness comes from God on the basis of faith. I am righteous today because I have faith in him. I'm not righteous because of all the, the rules and regulations that I keep. And Paul also points out that genuine Christians, although they, they struggle, will not live according to the flesh. So the Apostle Paul is not given us today to say, well, because I wrestle with it, I'm just going to give into it. No, I'm not going to live according to my flesh. I may deal with it, but it doesn't mean that I just go ahead and give myself over to it. And that's what the Apostle Paul is stressing to us. It's all right for you and I to deal with the, the, with the, the, the fall of man. You and I deal with it. All it should do is humble us and make us realize that I need Christ and that I put my faith and confidence in Him. But it does not mean that I can just go out and do whatever I want or give myself over uh, to, to, to the flesh that is within me. Amen. And that is that they will not persist in consistent state of a sinful living. I'm not just going to give myself over just to live sinfully. Romans 8 and 5. For those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who are according to the Spirit are the things of the Spirit. And so you will go what you think upon. If you're constantly feeding the flesh, you will go that way. And if you're thinking spiritually, you will go that way. Your mind is set. And let me tell you something today. There is and there must be a balance in everything. You and I have to work. We have to live in this life. Doesn't mean that we're so spiritual all the time that we, we don't have any common sense. You've got to have common sense. Amen. So I'm not here today to over-spiritualize everything either. Some things are just life. We're joking. Uh, last September 12th, we got hit with lightning. 
really hit my neighbor harder than it hit us. It's just we got the effects of it. And then Tuesday night, my wife drops us off at the airport, and the AC goes out. Because of all the sinning I've done, God was paying me back. Shouldn't get on the airplane because it could crash. No. It was just life. Our, compu- our AC is so computerized anymore that there was a stupid electrical glitch that made it kick out. And then the whole system had to be reset. Some things are life. And yet, if we're not careful, there are people that just over-spiritualize everything. Oh, the devil's after me. You know, don't think that you're so great that the devil's always after you. Hate to bust your bubble. Because if the devil's always after you, that means he's left billions of people alone. He's only one, and he's not all night present. He's not God. And so we have to be careful today that we don't over-spiritualize things too. But also, I'm not going to live according to the things of this flesh because if I live according to the things of the flesh, I may be dealing today with payment because of the things that I've done in the flesh. Amen. I know it's quiet, but that's all right. Paul encourages us that we need not to fear condemnation because we can come to God as a loving and a forgiving father. He said, Romans chapter 8, verse 15 and 16, For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption of sons by which we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testified with with our spirit that we are the children of God. Christians who live in shame and guilt over past failures are needlessly condemning themselves when they ought to be forgetting what is behind and pushing forward to what's ahead. Meaning that you and I today, we cannot be driving through life looking in our rearview mirror. Because if you look in your rearview mirror too long, you're going to crash. There's a reason why your windshield is bigger than your rearview mirror. And some people today have it reversed. They have a small windshield and a big rearview mirror. But Paul said in Philippians 3.13, he said, Brother, and I do not regard myself to having laid a hold of it yet. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. The things of yesterday are behind. I try to forget them and put them behind me. And guess what? I am reaching forward to what lies ahead. You see, fear can be paralyzing. But the Bible says that perfect love drives out fear. And as Christians today, we must understand that our justification is found in Christ alone, in his finished work of the cross, not in what we do and what we don't do. Romans 3, 28, for if we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from works of the law. Believers can find this assurance that we have been adopted into God's own family and being made heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ. And that nothing, the Bible says, can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Anybody thankful for that? Nothing can separate you from his love. Oh, in this life, yep, a lot of things can separate us from people that love us. 
people can turn their back on you. But the Bible says that nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So I conclude with this, that without Jesus, we would have no hope at all. But thank God that he has declared us not guilty and has offered us freedom from sin and supernatural power to be able to do his perfect will. Because I come back to it again. It's all about Jesus Christ. Amen. Anybody thankful today for your heavenly father? Amen. I'm thankful that he came to us and he paved the way and he took care of our nasty, sinful f flesh. But I want you to know this morning there's no condemnation if you're in Christ Jesus.